Chapter 1098, The Birth of Bonnie. It took a lot. This is one of those chapters that invokes a lot of emotions considering where Oda's going with it. And even where we are now, where Oda's going with it, I'm not, I'm, I don't, I don't. I want to start off with something a bit more important because Oda's health is being questioned here because chapter 1098 apparently was unfinished. It's only 15 pages and also you can tell from by the art it is not done or drawn really well. I'm a bit skeptical, I'm a bit curious, I'm a bit worried, right? Prayers up, making sure Oda's okay. I think the two weeks thing, it probably works best for him, but I'm okay with two weeks if that's what it means. But for right now, I'm a bit worried. We know Horikoshi this happened. Somebody said this happened at JJK earlier this year before. And obviously Hunter Hunter it happened for half of the story. So, so for Oda, we don't want to get there where we're getting chapters with chicken scratch. Prayers up. Let's all wish Oda the best. And now the cover art, dope, brook, guitar being charged by an electric eel. It's so simple, but it makes so much sense. Now let's get to dissecting this chapter. At the end of the day, this story is comprised of humans. We feel like demons, angels, Birkins, whatever. But at the end of the day, a lot of these people, specifically Kuma, he's human. And so the range of emotions, even from somebody so pure, so good, he's being affected by the supposed death of Ginny. When they show Kuma's face, after they said that Kuma has not been the same since Ginny's been captured, it looks, of, it looks like somebody that's been beaten down by life and they're starting to succumb to it. Not saying Kuma's going to become a bad person or he's becoming a bad person, but he's a bit more militant, a bit more cold, less jovial, his Eyes have less light. It's dark. It's brooding. I'm worried for Kuma a bit, but considering what he's gone through and what he's currently going through, I get it. He's had a long, hard, sad life, and there's been spots of happiness, and every time he feels like he's reaching it, it gets snatched away. In this chapter, Ginny, what happened to her? Well, we kind of called it. We're not going to gloat too much, you know. It is. We called it, though. Not everything. We got some of the beer bones things around. So we're showing Kuma, and some would have fallen into depravity, but not really. Because what happened to Ginny? Ginny got captured. And she not only got captured, we saw how beautiful Ginny is. She caught the eye of a celestial dragon. So there's a celestial dragon who saw Ginny was like, I want her. Well, they made Ginny their wife. And of course, at that point, Fukuma's imagination is running wild. I'm sure he's wondering what's happening to Ginny. It is so much going on for him. And he's, he's, he's in pain. But he's still on duty, taking care of business for the Revolutionary Army. I, I don't know what to say. I'm Oda, what are you doing to me? This makes sense. The celestial dragons, this is what they do. They take whatever they want. And Oda's building up in this chapter just how dastardly just how terrible just how disgusting the celestial dragons are it is no justification for it other than the fact that they're doing things because they can something i noticed is kuma after he went out and he called dragon saying i can't use my devil fruit power i wore myself out i gotta come back by ship dragon had a look of concern i wonder how many conversations they had since then about Ginny and about kuma's disposition and everything he's been doing because kuma he's going through it man he's in pain but i wonder if he's talking to anyone who's there from at this point of course the people of Sorbet, but it seems like he's not even at Sorbet anymore. He's just going out and being just a cog for the Revolutionary Army. You know, he's a commander, but you understand what I mean. It's sad, right? Because his happiness, every time it gets there, it gets snatched away. So I wonder if they had conversations with Dragon actually being a friend or was he being a boss or were they ever even friends? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but that's, it's just so... It's, Sad. Two years after that point, we find out we see someone on a boat. They say we're nearly there, Bonnie. I'm like, whoa, 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 what is going on? And this is two years after that. So remember, Bonnie was supposed to be 24 years old. This is two years after that, which was 14 years ago. This is 12 years ago. Ah, uh, yeah, you guessed it. Bonnie is 13. Guys, I, I don't want to get too deep into this because this is a, all right. Some people got caught in 4K. Bonnie's fruit is an interesting fruit because it's the age age fruit. You wonder how much it ages you. Does that affect your biological structure permanently? I mean, it seems like Bonnie is genuinely a little kid. You wonder about the setup because of how she was introduced and how she looked when she was introduced. So for some people, I think even lusting after Bonnie now, it feels a bit nasty. At the end of the day, people are going to be weird about this. I think now going forward, she's 12 or 13. No lewd pictures, none of that. It's just a manga character, but people use things to judge other people. But it feels a little, eh. She's, she's 13. Enough of that, though. Let's get back to the chapter. Ginny actually calls the revolutionary base, calling Baltigo, and she's talking to them about, well, she finally made it back to the surface because they let her go. And, well, they let her go because she was sick. They just threw her out. Kuma's losing his mind. This is probably the most hope or most emotions he's felt 
ever since Ginny got captured. And now, now she's back and she's calling them. And they're thinking, okay, wh where are you? Let's, we're going to come save you. She's saying, well, this is my call saying goodbye. So Ginny's calling and Kuma, all he heard was, wait, wait, you're sick? And Kuma, you know, he's he's panicking because he's like, yo, I can come see you. Just let me know. I can be there in no time. He has the perfect devil fruit for that. With Kuma's actions and Ginny's last words, just seeing everything you know, come together, it's... <sighs> I don't know, it's heartwarming, man. How old it drew her, and again, it's really sketchy just considering this the manuscript wasn't finished, saying she's at death's door, saying she doesn't want him to see her like this. It, he left right away, just right away. And while he's leaving, she's talking to Dragon, saying, yo, just take care of him. He has a very big heart. I can imagine just this entire time while she's going through what she was going through, she's probably thinking of Kuma, right? Just thinking of her old friend. She loved him. She never got to see that materialize just because of Kuma's trauma, and of course, her getting kidnapped. She couldn't wait to see him again. <sighs> Man, that's just sad. It's, Kuma goes right away to where she could be, went and got her, comes back, and in the midst of it, she's saying, I love you, I always have, I always will. Just imagine him just hearing that. He's breaking. Like, it's breaking him because that's pure, unadulterated love. That's just, that's all we can say. Okay, something that I want to update while I'm editing. This is crazy. I said that Kuma probably felt crazy when Jenny said that she loves him a lot. Come to think of it, I don't think Kuma heard that because he had left. And so Kuma never heard any of those things. And that just breaks my heart. And I don't think I could have gotten through or uploaded this video without including this. So yeah, Kuma didn't hear that stuff, which is, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Also, the chapter wasn't finished because of the manuscript or whatever. And we don't know exactly the reason, but the manuscript was not finished. And I don't know, and this may be a super glaze, but somehow the disordinance of the chapter, just how sketchy it was, it added to the chapter. It added to how disoriented Kuma was, just how much chaos was going on, just how his mind was frazzled. So I think this was a great thing that worked out, even though it wasn't finished. It just fit it so well. It's almost like how sometimes Togashi drew Nanika and some of her chapters. It was just so chaotic. She was drawn a bit frazzly. And so I just wanted to point that out, guys. Now back to it. Kuma comes back with Ginny, and Ginny is almost like a hard carcass, right? Kuma said she turned blue and hardened when she got exposed to natural light in the sun. When he said it turned all blue of course my mind went somewhere else but it was just like wait what is going on and for kuma he's thinking back to all the times that they spent together her being happy from just eating and being full all the memories they have together they were together for over a decade right? for a long time this is his best friend the pain the pain the pain but when you think about why jenny did it she did it to not expose her daughter bonnie to the sun who knows who the dad is she was in captivity for the most part taken by a celestial dragon who knows if it was one celestial dragon did they pass her around i i don't know i don't know but it's it's traumatic when you think about it and what she didn't what she risked for her daughter i mean this is just the mo with one piece characters Rouge, like you know the moms they do what they can for their kids and that that typically means dying and so with this kuma took up the mantle okay because you see kuma was not the stepfather okay kuma was the father who stepped up bonnie is not his biological daughter but kuma is the man who she's seen her entire life and she calls him dad that is his daughter i don't want to hear any ands ifs or buts about it that's his freaking daughter and that is adorable what i loved is how the town of sorbet came together to help kuma raise this girl seeing him trying to get the food together all the old people that he was helping now they're helping him right it's coming full circle it's like no that's not how you do it. that's not how you put the diapers on that's not how you fix the bottle right that's not how you hold her head hold her neck up right hold her properly no we got to be a bit more gentle than that kuma right it's dads being in their daughter's lives and raising a daughter it is the most beautiful thing even with her sleeping and eating it's reminding him of Ginny, and i'm sure the pain is a lot to tolerate but he's a big boy right he's a big boy and he's showing he can handle it and Ginny, bonnie is giving him a new lease on life when we saw kuma his face at that moment you could tell that this man was going through it and just the hope and the love that he gets from just seeing bonnie live and grow in the likeness of his of her mother it is pure unadulterated joy this is what he has to live for at this point no question and so again kuma happy raising her he's still doing his job as a revolutionary when he can but he's still raising his daughter probably tucking her in every night could just take a swipe you know just to get back to her he probably isn't wearing himself out as much so he doesn't have to take a ship he can just use his devil food power just to get back to bonnie but oda's montaging through things showing us with kuma fighting against people as revolutionary him even sleeping him training sabo see bonnie in the little cage it's glorious man it is glorious i'm like kuma's happy again <sighs>
then tragedy happens again. Not necessarily tragedy, bad news. Kuma boarded up all the church windows and he's like, yo, close the door right now. And there's tears coming down his eyes. You look at Bonnie's cheek and you see a blue stone, similar to what her mom died from when her body hardened over. I'm like, oh no, what, what else? And the two boys, the two guys, Gil Gil, they recognize it looked just like what Ginny had at the end of her life. They want to get some doctors. The doctors don't know what's going on because this is a rare disease, even more rare than the white lead poisoning that Law had, which is telling me that Bonnie's double food is going to pay or help her alleviate this problem, but I don't know. I, I really don't know. I understand what Law's food with Bonnie's. I, how, how does that work? Kuma, in turn, to take care of his daughter, quits the Revolutionary Army, and I support that 1,000% because I would do the same exact thing. And so he goes to Dragon and Ivankov saying he has to quit to take care of Bonnie. Now, people are getting on Dragon before this saying that Dragon did not go and slide for Ginny. Like, why didn't he go get Ginny? I'm like, it's not like she's just at the grocery store. Like, he has to go to marry Joa. At that point, the Revolutionary Army is in its infancy, right? They're still a young organization, still growing, no resources. You're telling them to go on an all full out assault on Mary Joa? Dragon has more responsibility than that. He cannot sacrifice this entire revolution for Ginny. As important as Ginny was, he cannot do that. This in no way makes Dragon a fraud or whatever the heck people are saying about him because what, what do you want him to do? I'm sure when we see Dragon and everything, he's been through i'm sure it took a huge toll on him because he seems like the man that cares about people and does things in the background to save people i'm sure dragon was doing everything in his power he was not only looking for Ginny. i'm sure he went to different places himself didn't want to put his people in danger but i'm sure the capture of Ginny hurt him deeply that's what i believe he cannot arrange for this assault to happen on Maya joa they're not ready even now i think it'd be an impossible task people are referencing fisher tiger saying fisher tiger went and eat fisher tiger went knowing the layout being a fishman which we saw with jimbei you can get away from a yonko if you're a fishman okay because you just jump in the water what are you gonna do a dragon is a bit different and someone my boy wing made a good point saying hey for dragon if he goes to save Ginny, is he just gonna save Ginny, or is he gonna save everybody there or try to save everybody there it's a suicide mission but i think i give him props because one of his top commanders decides, hey, I want to leave to take care of my daughter. OK, go do what you got to do. And we're going to support you with resources that we have. That's a great captain, a great leader. Ivankov has said numerous times, Luffy's just like Dragon. We haven't seen that from Dragon. In these moments, I look at it and I'm like, OK, his character in these dire moments, his character is showing through. He's a great man. We just got to give it time. We just got to wait and see. Dragon is going to live up to the hype. A full on assault on Mary Joa is not it. That's not how he does things. Sorry. And he's not going to appease you by going and showing, hey, I'm as strong as Admirals or Yonko because come on, bro. Silly argument. Silly argument. Bonnie's now five years old and people are calling her a vampire because she doesn't leave the church and they're trying to mock her and make fun of her. And she is a tough son of a gunman like Ginny was. She's giving him the middle finger. She's drop kicking them. And her and Kuma's relationship is so pure. It's so beautiful. Kuma telling her she can't go outside. She's like, dad, I, I got it. I was just joking. You worry too much. But then she's saying they're making fun of her face, the jewels in her face, right? But Kuma spins it saying, yo, those, those are beautiful jewels. They don't know any better. They're silly boys. And Bonnie's like, what? You like them? It makes me think about her name. When you go back and look at Bonnie in real time, she has a piercing on her cheek and her name is Jewelry Bonnie. And Bonnie look up the definition it means beautiful so i don't know man it's just all so beautiful everything in context just is blowing me away bonnie saving zoro from celestial dragon she does not care for those people even though she probably is part celestial she doesn't care for those people at all so she doesn't want someone to suffer at their hands at all so many more things are just coming full circle man oda casually throwing in kuma saying where would you like to go on a trip i'm like bro oda stop playing with me stop playing with me like that i think that's just glorious talking about sky island fishman island and so when kuma does that outside of this it's just like oh i have context now right it's just these beautiful pure memories that he has bonnie crying getting mad at vegapunk saying yo you did this to my dad i understand the visceral reaction she is mad you killed him you you killed him even more bad news the doctor comes and shows up talking about hey by 10 years old because he's five at this point by 10 years old he's saying even if you prevent exposure it just catches up to you but here's the problem Ginny was only there for two years and she, her entire body got consumed by it but of course it seems like she was protecting Bonnie the entire time and stuff. he's saying it's gonna take five years and so I'm, I wonder about this disease was it man-made is it something that was planted in Ginny I don't know of course at this point it seems like it is genetic and it is hereditary I don't know man I hate this after talking to the doctor Kuma goes back in and Bonnie's like bro I heard everything dad like 
like, like nah, 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 it's fine. Don't worry about it. We'll be okay. I get to take you wherever you want to go when you're 10 years old. And Bonnie, she's just so pure. Like, it's love. And I think that's the, the, the main thing is showing that Kuma's had amazing moments in his life. And, you know, it's paralleled by just completely the worst of the worst. But he's felt love and he's been loved and he still is loved. It gets dark because they go back to Sorbet and now King Bakori is back and he, he has a vendetta for whatever reason. And now the people are coming to Kuma saying, yo, King Bakori's back and he's, he's trying to destroy everything. And it could get dark, right? It could get dark because he's trying to burn people in their houses. And I know this chapter somewhat disproved all the Bonnie clone theories and all that, etc. But let me ask you guys this, right? Because I'm going to expound upon this in a separate video. But for Bonnie, are we sure this is the Bonnie that we see today? We still have no reason for Kuma being a tyrant. We see we still have no reason for Kuma working with Vagabond, working with the world government. What was the reason? Of course, not, wait, wait, wait. Let me step back a little bit. The reason could be Bonnie's condition and trying to find a cure for that. Saturn being the warrior science god, he could know somebody, know something, know where to cure it. It must be a celestial dragon disease. And, show, and so, of course, a celestial dragon should know how to cure it. And then they use that leverage for Kuma to become a slave essentially where Saturn always wanted him because he's a buccaneer it is sick and twisted but at this point Kuma would do anything for that little girl and I support it 1000% because that is his daughter and that's what I do I worry because Oda didn't finish the chapter and we're going on break next week and I hope he's fine right I hope he's fine <sighs> but man there's so much to talk about so many different timeline things but Kuma Bonnie just amazing characters I, I don't even know what else to say bro I don't even know what else to say